as Mal Meninga takes the Canberra Raiders out now. Will this be the last appearance of Mal Meninga at the Sydney Football Stadium? Daly with no padding on those thighs, as Paul Vorton pointed out earlier. That must be a good sign. The big fellow is down at the end of the tunnel. And here he comes, leading the green machine out. The second biggest event in club football in Australia. That is the final. There's only one more rung on the ladder. Premiers in 89 and 90. The Raiders are out there. Huge crowd. Capacity again. Mullins, Nagus, Meninga, Wiki, Nandruku, Daly Stewart, Pongi, Walters, Lomax, Croker, Ferner and Clyde. No changes. Now the Bears. Further chapter in this fairy tale. Unfolding today. Haven't been to a grand final since 1943. They haven't won a grand final since 1922. And listen to the crowd. There is no doubt who has got the, uh, the balance of power in the crowd. The North Sydney Bears. We went down to Canberra a couple of weeks ago. The team is the same. Sears Hall, Cleary, Caruana, Hoppy, Florimo, Taylor, Hearn, Soden, Fennick, Larson, Fairley and more. There he is, the Rothmans medal winner, David Fairley, briefly before Mario Fennick. About 24 degrees. There's not a puff of breeze out there. And Greg McCallum is the man in charge. It's going to be Canberra running from right to left. The telecast going around Australia live. And live as well via Star Television into Hong Kong for the first time this year. Meninga. Just waiting now for Greg McCallum to blow time on. And there it is. The final is underway off the boot of Mal Meninga. And down for Soden to give to Fairley to bring it back. Fairley met by the first Canberra tackle, about 15 out from his own line. Larson gets in the queue and takes it beyond the 20-metre point. Soden looking for a quick play the ball after Pongier and Lomax had made the tackle. And now Fennec with that burrowing type run. 30 metres out from his line, played by Fennec. Soden takes the fourth play. He's just 39 metres out from the line. Florimo goes away with a little dummy half run that gained him about seven metres. He ran into Pongia and Croker. And now the last for the boot of Jason Taylor. He steps and is eventually trapped there by Quentin Pongia. There's trouble here for North Sydney, but Matt Sears comes away and is tackled. That's the turnover. Well, great pressure there by the Canberra players on Jason Taylor. I still don't know why Sears didn't kick that. Canberra go wide now. And they go wide through the hands of Daly out for Ruben Wickey. Wickey's tackled 32 metres out on tackle one. Incredible for Canberra to come up in a field position such as this, given that North used their six tackles. Here they come away now on the third tackle. They're 22 metres out from the North Sydney line. The ball to be played here by Jason Croker. And a penalty goes to Canberra. That's against the North Sydney tacklers for not getting away from the player asked to play the ball. It's been a great start from the Raiders. It was noticeable that Ricky Stewart on the fourth tackle was getting into second marker. He wanted to put pressure on his opposition halfback and the kick was coming up. They did exactly that. Sears should have kicked the football. And now Fennick has given away a penalty in the play the ball area. And David Ferner, 22 metres out, about 15 metres in. You see there, there's Stewart getting out got there, tried to step back inside Taylor, but the other mark had come through as well. Sometimes you can only see the one going through. And Matt Sears, well and truly wrapped up. Very enthusiastic, the green machine. Just an interesting part to start the game, Ray. Mal Meninga normally defends on the right-hand side of the field. He's lined up on the left-hand side today, and they've moved Ruben Wickey over to the right. Now, whether it remains that way for the whole game remains to be seen, but they've certainly thrown something up different for North Sydney to look at. David Ferner, 
22 meters out from the North Sydney line, 20 meters in from touch. A chance to put first points on the board, looks good. Straight between the uprights, first points in the final to the Raiders. 2-0 after two. Taylor back to halfway. Sideline comment from Steve Roach. Well, there's a bit of pressure on Greg McCallum. You can't tell me that that was holding down any longer than at least 20 occasions last week. Obviously, he's being told that he let him lay on the tackle player too long last week. I don't know whether it was reverse psychology, but Tim Sheen's made a point of... Uh, now, just hold that comment as McCallum comes in urgently with uh, Ricky Stewart. And it's blood bin against John Lomax. But Tim Sheen's made uh, a laboured point of the fact that uh, he wasn't happy with Canterbury holding down for too long in the tackles when he heard that McCallum had the final. I'm just wondering whether or not that will be uppermost in the mind of Greg McCallum and will work for the Raiders' advantage. Well, David Lomax, uh, John Lomax, Steve Roach told us that he had that cut at training during the week and that the Bears would be looking for it early. And not only went looking for it, it seems they found it. He's in the blood bin. Hetherington is on in 42, a dummy half. And this is Ferner. Ferner pulled down by Larson around the leg. Soden came over the top with Hearn. Right, the first thing that you must do in semi-final football, the very first thing is get your marker defence right. From the last tackle, Sears picks up on his own 20-metre line. The gauge for North Sydney will be the yards made by Steve Walters out of dummy half. If that works for you, your market defence, everything else seems to fall into, into place. So North now 40 metres out from their line, and now they get a penalty. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind, McCallum, he's making sure of one thing, that he doesn't get any criticism from anybody about the length of time enjoyed by tacklers in the tackle. Criticism from Tim Sheen seems to be working, but it might work both ways. Cleary is tackled and banged into the ground very heavily. He was under a cloud, an ankle injury during the week. And now Hearn, 28 metres out from the Canberra line. Across from Soden for Taylor to look inside and pick up Sears, but uh, Stewart is with him and Walters is there too. 2-0 Two in favour of Canberra. First points came after two minutes. A penalty goal landed by David Ferner as Mario Fennec takes the tackle from Ferner and Stewart. Soden passes for Taylor, then the run around, but it was a bad pass. Fairley has made it look even better than it was. Fairley plays at 12 metres out from the line. Taylor puts the kick in the air. It's a very good bomb. Stacks on the mill. Mandruko puts it down cold, and that's a try. Scored by Mark Soden. Well, we saw Matt Shears drop one behind the line last week. On this occasion, it was a pretty simple take for Noah Nandruka. He got good cover by Mal Meninga. Pinpoint accuracy again. Look at the height of that kick, giving the chasers time to get through. Meninga gets in the North Sydney chasers' way, and Nandruka, it's a simple drop ball. Great work from Soden to get down with pressure. And the very a lack of camera players around this play there's only three there. Mullins, I thought, should have hung back because the Drinker was the man always going to take the ball and did Soden force that football? Question mark over that one, Rabs. Yeah, it just looked a bit doubtful how he has, in fact, forced the ball. Keep in mind that as long as it's forced with downward pressure, even by the torso region, that's still a try. I just wonder where Soden was in relation to the kicker. That's what I'm more concerned about. Was he a dummy half? If he was, he was obviously in front of the kicker. And being in front, he had to stay 10 metres away from Nandruku. Jason Taylor then, he's not concerned about that as he converts. The Bears lead. The Grizzly Bears, 6-2 over the Raiders, seven minutes gone. And Inga carries it back to halfway. Meninga's restart taken by Soden, who asked Larson to go back out. Now it's 
Billy Moore. Six points to two in favour of North Sydney. I left you with a question as some of you went to a break. If Soden was the dummy half, that surely would put him in front of the kicker. But Peter has done some more examination of that. Apparently, Chris Talawana had folded into, into the dummy half role. So Mullins has tackled now, 25 out from the Canberra line. Hetherington using Nandruku. I guess with Nan... Oh, Nandruku. Turned around like a barrel. North surging in defence in the early moments. I guess uh, with Nandruku putting it down, and we saw Nagus under pressure relax last weekend. Nice. There might be just a little bit more pressure exerted on the Canberra flankers by opposing sides, particularly the high ball. Now Stewart across for Daly. Daly lets the decoy go, then Mullins. Oh! Floromo! Warren picked him off beautifully, and then Stewart kicks. It goes down inside the 20 metre line, and Sears brings it back. Well, that tackle by Greg Floromo is the best test of root cartilage damage you've ever seen. They don't just go away. Florimo's hurt himself in that tackle as Cleary has pushed back around the 20 metre mark. And that's a bad sign for the Bears. The shoulder area, a major problem for the 5'8. Uh, Brett Mullins might have had his rib cartilage checked out, but uh, Florimo looks as though he's done a shoulder, a right shoulder in the, in the bargain. Well, a worrying moment for North Sydney, even though they enjoy a lead on the scoreboard. Taylor goes across to find a front rower. Turning it back inside for Matt Sears. He's away from David Ferner, pulled down by Ruben Wickey. 40 metres away from the North Sydney line. This is their last tackle. Taylor uh, keeps it low, and he finds touch. Just outside the 20 metre line, the boyish face of Jason Taylor looking on at the work that he's just performed. Doshak prepares to come on to replace Greg Florimo, who's limbering that right arm, trying to get some movement in it. And there was the tackle. It was a beauty. Florimo back into the action now. That Rocky Bowl is still playing up, though. But North City looking to exploit any weakness Canberra have got on the edge of the rucks. They did it last week against Brisbane through the likes of Tony Hearn and Gary Larson, and looking to do so the same today. Nandruku. Bradley Clyde, just outside his own 30-metre point. Walters is the dummy half. Several of these players, of course, very much a line ball for the Kangaroo Tour, the team to be announced next Sunday after the grand final. Right, North Sydney have started this game very physically, which is what they had to do to test out if Canberra were carrying injuries. Canberra seem to be sitting back and copying it at the moment. I mean, they've got to get involved in the physical part too. If they give North Sydney too much of a lead, that 100-minute game last week will start to play on their mind. Stewart waiting the ball down, and again, North Sydney are going to bring it back. Sean Hoppy is the man, and he's away from Nandruku, and Ricky and Croker has to come in and tidy it up. Well, well Slack attempts a tackle there. Head down and a burrowing charge by David Hall, the other winger. Now for Hearn, got Larson with him one side, Carol one of the other. Soden will move into dummy half. A roar from the crowd, not happy with the tackle on the, uh, the North Sydney prop. Yeah, swinging arm there from Ponga, well taken by Billy Moore. The inside pass there. It's been a good set of six here for North Sydney as the ball goes back to Taylor. A big step not taken by Steve Walters. So they'll need to look for another kicker here. It'll be Sears. 42 metres out from the line, and Matt Sears keeps it low, gets it in behind Nandruku and finds the line. 25 metres out from the Canberra line. A comment on the sidelines from Steve Blocker-Roach. Yeah, ordinary defence from the Canberra Raiders. They don't look into this game at the moment. Jason Taylor's even taking rucks up, and David Hall. They've got to smash them blokes if they're going to run in the ruck. Well, Florimo is now signalling to the, the sideline as the touch judge comes in for that swinging arm by Quentin Pongia. Still plenty of concern about Florimo's right shoulder. That's the swinging arm that missed by the proverbial mile. It looks like he's had more than one go. Yeah, I think it was good refereeing. It, it, it did miss. I think the caution on the run was the way to go. 
But McCallum saw it, he wouldn't give a penalty now, would he? No, he hasn't. I think it's a great piece of refereeing by Greg McCallum. Value of a good captain too, Mal Meninga, to make sure he was right there in the referee's face, hear everything that was going on. I reckon if you had Meninga in your face, you'd be a bit hesitant to give a penalty against him, wouldn't you? Or his team. I'd give him one. And Phil, Mal has moved over to the right-hand side now. Yeah, I suppose the first try has just unsettled them a little bit, go back to something they're more familiar with. Uh, good hands by Mullins. Taken by Larson. Canberra 31 metres out from their own line. They work on the blind for Pong here. He turns it back to Lomax. They're labouring Canberra at the moment. Stewart across with a long ball for Daly. A short pass for Clyde. Clyde tackled. No gain in ground. A couple of tackles left as John Lomax... Pulled down on the halfway line and the penalty has been given. Now Stewart comes in, not happy with the tackle on John Lomax. Well, this and is really... McCallum gets in Stewart's face now. He's down, Lomax. This has really stung him and he's a pretty tough character. Ricky Stewart didn't like the tackle. He rushed in 100 miles an hour. And now Tony Hearn, the mean man being called out by McCallum. Well, it was a swinging arm up around the head area, but I think the problem was the fact that Fairley had gone low and he fell pretty awkwardly. Ricky Stewart rushing in, trying to have a shot at Tony Hearn. Not that advisable. It'll be a Canberra penalty 48 metres out from their opponent's line. And it was late in the tackle count, so that's going to count against the Bears. Ray, one of the concerns with Canberra in recent weeks is the amount of work that Bradley Clyde's been doing, hitting the ball up like a front rower. Now, Canberra have encouraged him to get out wide. We've seen him have a couple of runs off Laurie Daly out in the back line. But they're certainly missing him around the rucks. Now, the other forwards have got to take the responsibility. If Bradley Clyde's going to loiter in the back line looking for a bit of space, someone's got to get in and roll their sleeves up and do the work that he's normally been doing. They're saving Bradley Clyde to run out wide. So the penalty to be taken by Stewart. And he'll find the line, I expect, down around the 25-metre point. 25 to 10, North won the first encounter at North Sydney Oval, and then Canberra almost with an identical turnaround of that scoreline, 26 to 12 in the major preliminary semi-final. They have a pet play down here, Canberra, where they look for an inside pass and almost run a second man on the inside. That's Mullins getting involved, but have a look for players coming up the middle of the ruck in a second man play. Stewart then dummies to Meninga, who stays with him and then takes the reverse pass, and Magus... Eventually is put to ground. They're 15 out from the line. The Raiders with a good chance as it goes out along the line for Daly. Ferner offers a decoy. Daly goes back and then shovels the ball out the back for Stewart and then for Clyde. But Greg Florimo does well. Walters now. Ferner. Ferner puts it down. Soden comes away. Ricky goes high and misses him. 21 out from the north line. Florimo now keen to work. He's OK, it would seem. Hoppy, former Raider. 35 metres away from his own line. 6-2 in favour of the Bears. And Fairley gets a one-hander away, taking two defencemen out of it. This is Caruana beating another and another. And then forced back by the joint tackle of Ricky in combination with Clyde. Plenty of ball movement and plenty of defensemen beaten, but they didn't go too far forward. This is Billy Moore now. Last tackle is with us as they keep it onto the right of the ground, and it takes the right-hand bounce. And so the scrum will go down 18 metres out from the Canberra line. One of the tactics when playing Canberra is if you can keep finding touch and walking to the scrums, you can put Canberra to sleep with set plays. Now, they've had a couple of penalties and come up with structured sets of six, and they are walking to scrums. You can put Canberra to sleep. I also think, Phil, that it's nice to play Canberra in set play situations instead of broken play. I think Mullins is much more dangerous coming back, maybe against a staggered line. And the fact now North Sydney have got a chance to get their defence set. Hello. There was movement at the station again. Fennec unlike, and Lomax. Unlike Mario to be involved in something like this. Leading the way for Norse tonight, today. 
He's been called out by McCallum. Does Mario Fennec's reputation walk before him? It's a question often asked by Mario in the main. Mind you, this John Lomax looks like he might have been on a similar preparation to Mario Fennec. As Canberra come away winning the scrum and the winger ran the decoy and this has allowed Ruben Wecky to make good ground out of the 20-metre line. Meninga has gone into dummy half, Clyde has come up on the blind, that's him with it now. Nagus was there, but uh, he decided to go to dummy half as Clyde take, takes the tackle. Nagus then, a very deceptive runner. Doesn't look to be doing much, but he's travelling at speed and he's got a good turn. On those hips as Croker comes away now, 43 metres out from the Canberra line. Six points to two then, just one try, scored by North Sydney. After Canberra grabbed the first points with the penalty goal for David Ferner. This is John Lomax. And five have gone. They're 45 out from the North Sydney line to the right for Stewart. Stewart puts it across back, opposite way to which he was running. And then Hoppy puts it down. Mullins is breathing down his throat. Hoppy able to beat Mullins. That wasn't hard to do. And then Wiki came in to make the tackle with Nan Vruku. Canberra, they need to defend now and keep uh, North Sydney pegged deep in their own territory. This is the third tackle for North, and they're not out to the 20-metre line yet. Soden is with it, and now fairly. And the Rothmans medal winner is held. 25 out from the North Sydney line. That would be the fourth tackle. What the Bears were able to do last week in coming out from their own danger area was string together a couple of passes. Now, that's not that radical a change in style, but what it does, it means the opposition work harder in defence and you get on more one-on-one -on -one situations more often. That's something that I don't think they're doing as effectively as they did seven days ago or eight days ago. Nagus plays the ball, Mullins sweeps it. They look to go wide early, and Daly is looking for the opening. And Laurie Daly is 42 out from his own line on the second tackle. This is the third. Meninga takes it into enemy territory. Over in front of the pack, grandstand on the far side of the ground. There's not a vacant seat that I can see. Stewart comes across for Lomax. And Lomax, this nuggety front rower, is tackled. About nine metres into North's area, and now Walters improves that to make it 25 metres into North Territory. A good run by the dummy half and Australian hooker. Away now from Croker into the hands of Stewart. Shaped to pass, then put it on the boot. Danger for North Sydney! Nandruko goes up at our Sean Hoppy. That was la magnifique. Magnificent take by Sean Hoppy under all sorts of pressure there. But he answered the call. Nagus right on his hammer on Andruku it was. Hard to tell them apart, really. Yeah, they certainly are hard to identify from as far back as we are. I'll try and get you out of it. That's, That's all I can do. Fairly is with it now. 35 out from the North Sydney line. They're 75 yards apart out there, Fatty. <laughs> oh, Phil, turn it up. Don't bag Fatty at this time of the year. Here's Larson now. Looking at the halfway with envy, he's pulled down a metre short. Played back for Chris Caruana to offload. Taylor tries to put Fennec through. He gives it back for Caruana. Then they get the pass wide. They've got the numbers here. Canberra have to slide. Was there a high tackle in back play? Hoppy is with it and put away. Forward 31 pass. metres out. Forward pass here, Ray. The last pass to Hoppy. Dean forward by the touch judge. McCallum didn't see it. The touch judge ruled on it. It's a good play, good interchange of passing here by the Bears. This is a lovely ball by Florimo. Watch him draw and then pass. That ball there is the one deemed to go forward by the touch judge. Well, there'll be plenty of people argue with him, but I guess if we start arguing about forward passes, we'll do nothing else. As Stewart works the scrum, Norths are warned by McCallum to stay outside the five, and Bradley Clyde goes up to be tackled by that line of back, uh, back men for, for North Sydney. Now they come back to the blind with Daly showing it, then trying to put Ferner into a gap. And Ferner has pulled down about five metres his side of the halfway. They stack the blind side for Lomax to head the charge. And he's pulled down now just into North's area. They are starting to find a little bit more space now, the Raiders. Sometimes the North Sydney mark is not up quickly off the ground. They've already seen Steve Walters make a 20-metre burst. 
There's more ground there to be made, and that's when the Raiders are dangerous. Stewart switches the point of the attack. They go back to the area that they've been working on. Ruben Wickey comes fast. Hoppy is there. Loses the ball! And it's there to be gathered in by him, so it's got to be a knock-on, and it's got to be a, a Canberra feed and loose head. Well, that's bad luck for Sean Hoppy, because um, his contribution thus far has been magnificent. Did the ball get some help? Good play there from Canberra. They had Daly standing out wide to the right. The switch of play across the ruck to Bradley Clyde. Not a noted kicker, but still able to put a lot of pressure on the ball suit receiver, Hoppy. And here's one of the first real tests for North Sydney as Canberra go across the line. And Meninga comes up with it, but it's forward. Well, that was the play that they scored last week with. Well, not exactly that one, but the setup was the same, and they've tried a variation. Unfortunately for Canberra, the pass was thrown forward. Everybody expected the pass to go wide. But Mal just timed his run a little bit... Well, they're a little bit too early. So North Sydney would be relieved that they only had to really last out one tackle. I don't know that they would have held Canberra for six tackles, given the situation that led up to it. Oh, more taken around the nose by Lomax. And Billy Moore is face down. Lomax is being called out oh, by he's McKenna. He's gone. He's off. He sent him off. John Lomax has been sent off. Well, he does sail close to the wind at times, John Lomax. Not the first time that he's come up with a, a high tackle. And that one, Greg McCallum has seen as a send off the fence. He more normally doesn't stay down, and yeah, it's a pretty tough tackle. That is an amazingly brave decision at the 23rd minute of the final, though. I think it's a tough call. Billy Moore was, he wasn't falling into the tackle, but he was crouching. And uh, John Lomax came in high, but for me, that's not a send-off off of all offence. Well, has it been a send-off offence during the year? Well, has it been a send-off offence in this match? Steve Roach on the sidelines. Well, I, I thought I thought Billy was falling a bit. Actually, John Lomax was bent going into the tackle. Sure it was high, but that can't be a send-off offence. It's no worse than what happened to him earlier in the game. Yeah, I'm with you, Block. So, as Phil said, a very brave decision by McCallum. Well, we are in for one of the great performances if Canberra are able to dig out of this. 12 men, there are 15 minutes of the first half remaining. Gavin Jones is on the field now, Mario Fennick has been replaced. And also Craig Wilson, that's Gavin Jones now in 40. Craig Wilson in 41 has also gone to the sidelines. Ferner and Pongier, or Fernier and Walters, Exhibiting their frustration and taking it out on a North Sydney runner. This is Larson. 32 metres out from the Canberra line. North leading six points to two. They've scored the only try and now they're playing uh, against 12 men. Soden. Soden pulled down by Mullins. 12 metres away from the Canberra line. They come to the right where they've got the numbers. Intercepted by Stewart. Stewart. Gets it away, but it's gone to nobody. Cleary now. 22 out from the Canberra line. Fairly. Stands and looks to unload, but there wasn't a runner in sight. Soden once more for Hearn. Hearn taken over the top by Clyde. Underneath was Walters. Soden to the blind side for Billy Moore. Apparently totally recovered, got the pass away, it's a penalty. It's a penalty for passing off the ground. I saw it and didn't call it because I thought maybe the arm had not touched the ground and I'm sure I'm right. This might sound a little bit strange, but Canberra will probably handle having a player less better than most teams in the competition because of the defensive style that they, they do have. They play compressed, they slide particularly well, 
and they would probably be able to cover not having a man there a little bit better than other styles of defences. Well, the rest of the team will have to lift dramatically because Lomax was their chief Carter upper and he was doing it very well all those yards up the middle. There's a spear tackle now. McCallum's ruling on this one as well. Looks like Ferner, the man who's been pile driven into the uh, the turf. It'll be interesting to see whether it was Gary Larson or Tony Hearn. It was Gary Larson that the referee has seen most responsible. He sent him off! Larson has gone! Well, again, Mal Meninga right in the referee's face there when he was deliberating about that. Well, here it is now. He picks him up now. The problem is he's got him between the legs, and that's what the league don't want. And Gary Lars is not a malicious player, but he's paid the penalty for lifting and driving. And Tony Hurd helping there, of course. Well, he tried to help, but in the end, it wasn't much of a help because uh, he made it look worse. So Larson, they're down to 12 apiece. Players have been told on numerous occasions through the year that it is a no-no to, to grab the play between the legs and drive. But all year, all year, Sterler, that has been a we'll have a look at that later type of fence. You've been put on report, and then it's up to the league to see whether or not he needs to face the judiciary. Mal Meninga was right in the referee's face when that tackle took place, saying that we've got a man off, we've got to even this up. Yeah. I think Lomax got sent because McCallum's patience had been worn out completely with some earlier incidents. But then I think Larson might have got his marching orders because McCallum thinking to himself, suddenly I've got an unbalanced preliminary final. Presumption, sure, but uh, there could be some truth in it. Now Jones plays at 45 out from the candle line. They go for a second man play on Tony Hearn and then around the back, Matt Sears, quick hands, Florimo. Cleary goes into a gap. Oh, Cleary, an ankle tapping tackle by Ricky Stewart. Played by him, they go the blind side and uh, chiming in is that Wilson out there now. Yeah, it was the wrong way to go as well. They had a big line back the other way. Craig Wilson with one support player ran into four Canberra players on the last now. Taylor across field towards Nagus's wing. And Nagus has to go high. He puts it down behind him. And Meninga as if, like an Australian rules rover, waiting for the dregs. Plays it on the 20-metre line, his own end of the park, Nagus. He's across now, looking to link up with Mandruku. That's as Hetherington. Hetherington gets ready to come back on. I do think North Sydney will miss Gary Larson more than Canberra will miss John Lomax. So Walters now uses Ferner. Significant than both Ferner and Moore. They were on the end of uh, the two incidents. They're back in the attack line pretty quickly. Now Meninga. And uh, he's able to stand and try and promote Mullins, but Mullins wishes he didn't. Mullins to play it. We're about 10 minutes out from half-time now. The preliminary final for the right to go and play Canterbury. Next weekend, Daly goes wide. This is the fifth tackle. Stewart puts it on the foot. And down it goes for Matt Sears, just outside his 20-metre line. He's coming out beyond the 30 now. And he runs straight away from Jason Croker. Oh, the big fella picked him off, Meninga. And David Hall scampers away from dummy half to gain another five metres. Craig Wilson has come in the game for Tony Hearn, who again had a very good start to the match. Fulfilled the faith shown in him by Peter Louie, opting to start him in front of Gavin Jones once again. Now it's with Taylor, a face ball over for Fairley. Fairley flicks it out the back for Jones, but Jones is put away quickly by Hetherington. And Soden, the dummy half, gives it for Taylor. Taylor pushes for Florimo. And Florimo is just inside the 40-metre line. Five tackles gone now for the Bears. They lead six points to two. And Taylor keeps it low. The bounce is good for Nagus. And Nagus comes out from his 20-metre line to take the tackle on the 30. Walters to dummy half. They'll come left quickly. They do that. Across for Stewart and then on. Uh, that is Ponglia picked up and driven hard by Ivan Cleary. No, it was Ruben Wicky. It's gone across now for Clyde to go back on the opposite angle. 42 metres out from his line. Walters a dummy half. Hetherington gets in the queue. Walters takes a dummy half run. Again today, like last weekend, he's left the frequency of dummy half running. Uh, pretty much out of his equipment in the first half. And now it's with Daly standing, looking for a runner. He finds one in his captain. 
And Meninga tries to go over the top of David Fairley, but Fairley takes him well. Five tackles gone. McCallum calling North's back the 10. Stewart runs to the line. Then the long pass. Wicking is with it. Wicking tries to get around Hoppy. Gives it inside for Mandruku. And uh, Wilson comes away with it for North Sydney. Half a chance there for Canberra. Matt Sears now tackled. 35 metres out from the North Sydney line. Half time is eight minutes away. Problem for North Sydney with Chris Caruana limping to the sidelines. Toshak will go into the game and play with first grade experience. 42. As Croker and Meninga tie up fairly, it comes away for Taylor to put it down. Beyond the 20-metre line, Mullins comes away with it now. He's got Mandruku on his left, who goes inside now, but Mullins is tackled neatly by Cleary. And his defence today, as always, Ivan Cleary has been outstanding. And I guess more outstanding is the fact that he's really a fullback who's had to adjust to playing centres this year. Hetherington has pulled down now. 41 out from his line. Walter's dummy half. They come on the blind side for Clyde. And Clyde in one side, out the other. Walters, they've only got to push the football and there's trouble. Daly for Meninga. Meninga back for Ferner. Ferner, he probably should have given it to Daly. He goes back inside and tackled his Kruger. 31 metres out from the North Sydney line. They go back to the blind side again. Hetherington really putting some power into his work. He's pulled down, they're 21 out as Meninga on five. Gives it for Stewart who kicks. Mandruku goes through, Hoppy puts it down. Then he gets it over the dead ball line. Well, that's more like Canberra with broken play. Players able to unload in tackles, creating space for the likes of Daly and Meninga. I think as this game wears on with only 12 men on each side, a lot of responsibility on the two general play kickers. Uh, Ricky Stewart and Jason Taylor, they have to appreciate their sides are working overtime. They've got to make sure they either get repeat sets of six with line dropouts or find touch with the ball so they can have a rest on the way to their defensive work. Well, Bradley Clyde's a bloke who's really taken on Canberra's responsibilities. He's, he's been great the last 10 minutes. He's hit the ball up four or five times and just made a half break and offloaded. So uh, he's a man, he's a champion player and he's showing it today. So the dropout goes straight through the waiting arms of Ruben Wickey, and that's good for North Sydney. They're back out to the 40-metre line to make the tackle. David, that tackle probably should have been made about 25 out from the line. That's David Wesley in 43 coming off of Jason Croker. I doubt that North Sydney can hold out too long here. Canberra really starting to find some gaps and some spaces. The one-on-one -on -one defence from North Sydney has fallen away dramatically. Hetherington taken in the defence, and now it's with Stewart. He lets Ferner go. Daly comes in, beats one with a fend, takes it to the 10-metre line. Um, Daly still looking to unload. Eventually, he's wrapped up by Gavin Jones. From Meninga, a dummy half over for Stewart. Stewart then for Hetherington on the angle. Then he gets it back for Mullins. Mullins is taken and put away. A three-man tackle, and five tackles are gone here. Stewart wants it on the left, and they may even come through the hands. It's with Stewart now. They go back to the other side where Meninga's waiting, and so is Daly, and so is Nagas, and Nagas gets it back, and Meninga, Meninga, he scores the try. Yes, the switch of play has done it again, and Big Mel Meninga, the captain, he's answered the call. He's come up with a great try and some good hands. Yeah, the switch of play was the key. The key players, we freeze it there. You can see there's only two North Sydney players. In fact, this player has left the line to go back and try and cover on the last, and that immediately means that there's an overlap out there. By the time that David Hall gets there, Nagus has got the, the wood on him through his evasion and good support play from Meninga. And again, he did well to take it around so far. North Sydney would be disappointed they couldn't keep him out wider. You know, that was a strange play by David Hall, the winger, wasn't it? He sort of drifted back and then... Realising he made the mistake, he had to come back into the line. It was all too late. And Mel Meninga's had a pretty fair game today. You can't overread those situations. Like, it was the last tackle, and that's the problem with, with Ricky Stewart or playing against Ricky Stewart, is that you start to think what he's going to do. When they kick the football back that way, that's when Hall's got to drop back. He can't drop out of the line predicting the kick. Well, Mel Meninga scores the try for Canberra to level at six points all. The try came five minutes from half time. David Ferner now. 
from pretty well right in front to put Canberra in front, and he's missed it. Six points all then, three and a half minutes to go before the break. Ball coming back slowly to the halfway. This has been an energy sapping first half. Well, what about that kick though? I mean, big games like this, you've got to kick those and uh, it's just a sitter. It's as if they knew we were in a commercial break. As uh, the ball eventually gets back to halfway, but players very slow to get this uh, next stanza underway. Taylor restarts with just on three minutes of the first half to go. And David Wesley comes back and away from his own line. Boot lost in the tackle by Wesley, and that's been cast about 30 metres down the ground. And since being left with only 12 men, Laurie, uh, Bradley Clyde has taken upon himself to get back into the thick of action, as Paul Voughton said. If this scoreline takes us to half time, we'll have six points all, 12 players all. I guess the only ones enjoying this will be the Canterbury fans sitting back uh, watching the action. But both, both dressing rooms will be full of talk on how to defend with only 12 men in your line. And both coaches will be trying to convince their teams the 12 men in your defensive line only matters when you ride on your own trail line. The rest of the time, it'll be business as usual. It's a side that can believe that right through the second half that will probably come up winners. So the kick in general play from Stewart was kept low, but Hoppy was there to accept it. Stewart looking for a mistake. And uh, only two minutes to the half-time break. And we're on the 30-metre line. And sitting into the ground, played by Matt Sears, and Soden gives it across for Gavin Jones. Jones is put away. Comments during the match from Paul Vorton, Peter Sterling, Phil Gould is with us for all the finals, and of course on the sideline, Steve Roach. David fairly tackled, five metres short of the halfway line. Back and away it comes from David Hall for Jason Taylor. He kicks the ball down into vacant space, and Mullins goes across. Um, North Sydney just outside the 10 metres and now it's Magus who accepts the pass from Mullins. A chance, a chancy pass that probably wasn't necessary. Clyde is put down 25 metres out from his line. Six points all then as the ball comes away with Hetherington. Hetherington who came into the game about midway through the first half, probably a fraction later than that. And already he's had an impact, and David Wesley is looking to do the same as he's tackled by Hearn. And now, out from dummy half goes Walters, his third dummy half run, and it supplies Ferner with a bit of ground to work in. And Ferner is tackled with 55 seconds of the first half to go. Stewart goes out, kicks for himself, Sears comes up from the deep, takes it and runs outside the 30-metre line, but Stewart, Stewart hangs on. Uh, great play, Ricky Stewart. Tony Hearn now takes it up. Big tackle a moment ago. The North marker players really dropped off the last few minutes. As a matter of fact, defensively, five minutes ago, Canberra had missed 12 tackles and North Sydney's won. It's now reads at 12-9. So North defence has been a bit dusty the last five minutes. And just looking in back play, we'll get a camera on Greg Florimo. He is walking very, very gingerly, Greg Florimo. He is in no position to be a part of this attack as Soden goes down, 22 metres out, 10 seconds to go. Here's Florimo trying to get into the game, but he's only just uh, taken some attention from the train to the drop goal attempt by Taylor. Oh, what a kick! What a kick! Taylor from 32 metres out on an angle. 7-6 the Bears. What a kick. Great play by Jason Taylor. A matter of seconds to go. Look at him, he's 30 metres out. 15 metres to the right of the post, never looked like missing. So Taylor has sent the Bears to the half-time break, leading by a point. Standing man with the boot. Just that psychological advantage, I suppose, that might help North Sydney in the half-time break. Talking of that, we'll do that now. Sterla will be back in a moment with Fatty. And I'll have a look at the first half. 7-6, the Bears, we're back in a moment. 
Rick Floromo back. There was some questions on Floromo whether or not he would come back for the second half. Let's go down and take a half-time summation from Steve Roach. Yes, well, in the Canberra room, Tim Sheens is a little bit worried that his team's getting out muscled at the moment. They've got to work for Marker. Soden's making far too many runs from dummy half for his liking. And he says his team's been a little bit too fancy with the ball and the forwards. They've got to make them yards. He's, he's expecting something big for Ponji when he comes back on. Also, David Wesley. In the Norse room, Peter Louie just said his, his defense, their defence was outstanding in the first half. He said, just watch that one-on-one -on -one stuff. You've got to make them tackles when you do. And he said, look, fellas, don't panic. We've got to make sure we get to our sets of six because Canberra are tired. Which, uh, which team looked the more confident, do you think? Well, North Sydney, as they come out, had their heads hit, held a little bit higher, if that's any indication. OK, so Taylor starts. And it's uh, Wesley who brings it back toward the 20-metre line on the first tackle since the half-time break and it goes across for Ruben Wickey who came in from the centres to take the second play not held and he's able to improve it now so they've done well to get 35 out not quite that from their own line on the second tackle Walter's a dummy half using Wesley again keen for work Heatherington is uh, hunched over in back play he must have taken a a misguided tackle as Walters reaches the halfway line. That's the fourth tackle now. As, as the players came out, we saw a shot of Mario Fennick to be on the sidelines. This is one of those times that I thought Fennick should be on the football field. He's experienced, he's a great defender, and he's inspirational, and that's what North Sydney are looking for now. As Matt Sears goes centre field, too much speed, but Clyde comes up with the tackle 22 metres out. So Matt Sears involved in one of the great personal clashes here at the football stadium today. His personal duel with Brett Mullins, I'm sure, has attracted a lot of attention, as has the clash between Floromo and Daly, Stewart and Taylor. On the sidelines, Steve Roach again. Yes, I agree. I agree with Sterlow, but uh, Norse are a little bit worried that they've used a lot of replacements. So that's why Murray's not, Mario's not on the start of the second half. A show of confidence by Nagus. He showed the sideline to David Hall and was uh, confident about his superior speed to round him up as they reached the halfway line. Taylor goes across to Fairley. Fairley dummies on the run around and takes it up the centre. And that's the end of tackle five now. For North Sydney, who lead by one point as it goes to Taylor. Taylor for Sears. Stewart's in pursuit, but the kick will find the line about 23 metres out from the Canberra line. Just on those replacements, Ray, both coaches will be keeping an eye on the clock and particularly the score. And in a view that last week's semi final went down to extra time, will be very, uh, I am mean, prudent with their, with their changes in the second half. Just keeping something up their sleeve for the last 10 minutes of the game, and especially if there looks like being extra time, just saving something. The scrum packing just outside the Canberra 20-metre line. We welcome viewers right around Australia uh, taking this telecast today. Many of you live, of course, right across uh, Australia. And, of course, in Hong Kong via Star Television as Clyde makes a bustling run, 35 out from the Canberra line. And now across for Hetherington to give for Daly, and he gives it on for Wiki, and then they turn it in for Meninga, who tries to get away from Florimo. Greg Floromo makes the tackle though. Daly uses the blind side. Wesley comes onto it, puts his big frame right into the action. And he's tackled 42 metres out from the North Sydney line. Wesley, he's run strongly, but now I see him limping away from the tackle. Now Daly, Daly probes, fends away. Daly beats another. That's three gone. Stands in the fourth, but Sears eventually wins the day. And this is a penalty. A penalty to Canberra right in front. And Laurie That's against Dun Matt Sears, I believe, for holding on to Daly. And Laurie Daly, didn't he carve them up then? That's the Laurie Daly, the international footballer we all know. Put the foot down, beat a few very ordinary tackles. And he's about to stamp his class on this game. It's a pretty ordinary defence here by North Sydney. Fairly couldn't, a very ordinary attempt by him as well. And he was support everywhere, but Daly just couldn't find anyone. Tell you what makes Laurie Daly such a class player. Everyone knows he'll shape the pass and dummy. Everyone knows he has a strong left foot uh, step. Everyone knows he's got a strong right arm fend, but you've just got to be able to stop him doing it. And season after season, game after game, especially in big games, this man's able to stamp his class at the most opportune times. David Furner. That's his kick. 
right in front. He missed a similar one just before half time. 180 for the season, and this one he's got. Only just though, Canberra the new leader, eight points to seven now. Jason Taylor quickly back to halfway for the restart. A show of, I suppose, confidence in one way that they would carry it back to the halfway quickly to get it going. As if to say, look at us, we're pretty fit. In fact, uh, Mario made that point the other day on the footy show. We are the fittest. Back now with the second tackle in front of us as uh, the ball is taken to ground by David Ferner, 20, 30 metres out from his own line, across for Stewart. Stewart on now. And Clyde it is that runs at the uh, the defence. Ran up the gap, in fact, and took two tacklers with him. They go to the blind again. Hedrington's there, got support. Wesley's with him. Got the ball away beautifully. Wesley's tackled three metres into North Sydney's area. Five tackles gone. Quick play, the ball required. They might put it through the hands. They are. Stewart finds Daly out wide. Now he might kick. No, he holds it back. They get the pass away from Nandruka. Nandruka for Mullins. And Mullins! Mullins is away! Inside for Nandruka! And he scores! They are a class act! You've never got them down! Mullins and Nandruku, Stewart and Daly, absolutely beautiful stuff. And the long pass from Ricky Stewart again, gave his outside men space. Let's have a look at this pass from Laurie Daly. A little bit of doubt over that one, but beautiful hands from Nandruku. Brett Mullins on the outside. Nobody could keep up with Nandruku on the inside. And the try there, we've had five points in as many minutes. Uh, wonderful play by Daly. Just took those few steps to bring the defence up to him on the fifth tackle. And look at Mullins, poetry in motion. And sensational play by the Raiders. Nandruku puts it down. We always thought that Canberra might get North Sydney out wide, and that is proving to be the case. I know he's got very big hands, now and Nandruku, but I'm not too happy about the way he placed that ball down. You should see his feet. No. I mean, the ball looks like an apple in that big right mitt, but crikey. To lose one there at that time of the game would have been uh, a tragedy. I'd like to see him dive over with the ball under his arm. Well, I mean, I don't know whether you're barracking for North or who you're barracking for, but I think you'd have to agree that this side is just magical to watch. But this is a very important kick, Ray, to put them seven clear. Because he missed one from an easier position than this. It is on the better side for a right-footed kicker. Well, we saw in the footy show fans coming from everywhere to watch the Raiders today. From the central coast to Cronulla Sutherland. And I said to you last weekend, they're right through the Riverina. They've probably got the biggest fan club of any club in the league, any, any club uh, in the New South Wales area. Given that they come from the territory, but here he is, Fernanar. 15 in, that is looking good. Flags are up. The Raiders go further in front. 14 to 7. <laughs> 47 minutes gone then. And 7 the difference now. I think the worst sign for North Sydney, especially in the first couple of minutes here, is that again, as we saw late in the first half, they're finding it much more difficult to come out of their own danger area let's have a look at this set of six from canberra that's hetherington almost getting to the 20 meter line first tackle the second tackle sees magus playing it just inside the 30 meter line that's the second that's the third tackle from the restart with canberra leading by seven you might recall in the the preliminary semi-final, Stewart goes through, there's support with Clyde, Meninga's inside him, but he's overrun him. Well, it was try time, but McCullum's pulled him back for the, the first pass from Stewart, deemed to be forward, but Canberra, how good do they look, running it again, out wide, the gap there, this pass here. Yeah, that's forward. I was about to make the point that in that preliminary semi-final, once North let them in once 
they had trouble shutting the floodgates. Let's hope that they've got them closed for the time being anyway. Sears has taken in a sandwich tackle by Wiki and Meninga. Away from dummy half goes Toshak in 42 and Wiki makes another pearler of a tackle. The cross now for Fennec and Fennec puts it down and this is not a knock on. Soden dives on it. I think Soden might have thought there was a little one in there. He was relieved to get up and find that the referee had said play on. Caruana is on, Cleary is off, Hearn plays the ball, Fennec is on, Jones is off as they come to Taylor, switches it, and across to Greg Florimo, who, he beats them, beats them all, ends up, finds Matt Sears, the ball goes to ground, North put it on the boot, that's play on, and it's dived on by Ricky Stewart for Canberra. Chance for the Bears. There's some inexperience shown by Matt Sears, never needed to throw that football at all, great dummy by Florimo, Beat the tackle of Steve Walters. That's the man you're looking for when you make the break, Sears, but well, that was always going to be a mistake. Both halfbacks very adept at switching the point of attack and with 12 men on both sides and both sides tiring as the game goes on. Coming up both sides of the rucking defence is going to be important and expect both Stewart and Taylor to be switching the ball more and more. Walters works with Nagas. The centre kick for Meninga. Nagas goes for the bounce. It's all, they're all beaten by it and North's come away with it. Hearn was trailing in the vanguard. He came up with the ball that was never expected. Why didn't he throw the ball to David Hall? Had open spaces in front, 30 metres to the next defender. Soden gets it away after Fairley had done well. Hoppy has now got some space. Wicky's after him and brings him down. And a great deal of straight line defence here as these teams start to tire. There are some, some cavities in the defence line as Fairley is tackled. 14 to 7, Canberra leading, and Florimo goes from dummy half, draws the winger in, uses his own winger. David Hall back inside for Florimo. Florimo put away by Mullins. 28 metres out, the crowd urging North Sydney now. Taylor, a long pass, bounces up for Toshak. Toshak's got Sears with him. There could be a try coming. They're going to Hoppy. Hoppy comes stepping back into the traffic. Five tackles gone. The Bears. Can they come back? Taylor loses his footing, gets the pass away. This is kicked through to over in the corner there by Sean Hoppy, cleaned up by Daly, and Daly is tackled. Oh, what a play there by Laurie Daly, just looming back there and cover the fence. Otherwise, it was try time. Hoppy had done very well to put it through on the toe, beat them all, and who comes up? Laurie Daly. Well, both sides there paying the penalty. They've both had half chances and gone for broke, turning the ball over. That's created end-to-end -end action. And as this game wears on with only 12 men, the gaps are just going to get wider and wider. I think the side that settles down, and it's got to be Canberra because they're in front on the scoreboard, they've got to settle down and play at their sets of six. And those half chances, just be secure in the fact that holding on to the ball is as good as the miracle pass that may come off. Five tackles gone as Solomon... Solomon prepares to come on in fact he's out there for North Sydney the bounce up for Sears Hoppy's with him Mandruku is eyeballing him and puts him away in company with Wiki they're 35 out from their own line the Bears they're trailing 14 to 7 that is Solomon it's gone across now for Wilson Wilson puts the step in off the left foot he's five meters short of the halfway Taylor is still there I'm just trying to work out what's happened is it Caruana's gone off a big tackle there Clyde again involved with Ruben Wiki. I tell you what, Wiki's defence today has been very, very strong. This is fairly now. So too is Laurie Daly, Ray. He's covered up a couple of dangerous situations and was there on hand at tackle five to take a grubber kick near his own line. He's having a major impact. Oh, Mullins did well. Soden did brilliantly, but Mullins did well. And the crowd, the crowd thought it was a knock-on. Croker now. I don't know that it was a knock-on. Mullins seemed to make a definite point of that by leaving his hand on the ball. Now watch it. Jeez. Oh, Brett Hetherington has come up with the knock-on that North Sydney were looking for. He's had a powerful game, Brett Hetherington, since coming off the interchange bench. Maybe Just they can feel there's a position vacant, Pete. I can't understand the Canberra attitude at the moment. 
I mean, they've opened this game right up and invited North Sydney back into it. They feel comfortable seven points ahead on the scoreboard, but that's not going to be enough if they keep turning the ball over in situations like that. Florimo almost deliberately running the attack straight at Mullins, who was up in the back line, and Mullins has come out of the tackle hurt. He's limping away as Fairley stands in the tackle. Canberra de desperately trying to shut the ball against his chest. And David Fairley will play the ball now. 21 out from the line. Soden goes to the blind side, and uh, it's kicked through there by Craig Wilson. A half chance for North Sydney. Winger on winger, and Canberra will restart with the line dropout. Well, Wilson there kicking early in the tackle count. His only third tackle, looking for a, a bit of space. He found the space and had Hoppy streaming through. So a good result in the end for North Sydney. I mean, if he's going to do that, Paul, Hoppy's got to be on his shoulder. He, he, there was three metres between the kicker and the man chasing, and that three metres was always going to give the Canberra winger time to clean up. I also think you've got two more tackles up your sleeve. You may as well use them. He's close to the line. Chris Caruana, what's his problem, Steve? Uh, cruciate ligament damage, so uh, he won't be back any time this year. So that means Ivan Cleary and Caruana, the defensive centres, aren't in the side. That's why this game's opening up. OK, so certain it is who was tackled there and put away by Jason Croker. In fact, is that not uh, David Boyle that's gone into the match? No, it was Croker. Now it's Florimo. Florimo on the 20-metre line. He's on the merry-go-round and he's put away. And lost the ball. Ricky Stewart patting Magus on the back, patting, uh, patting Hetherington on the head. He wasn't back when in calling to the referee either. As soon as he saw a hit of a knock on here, he was straight round. I'll say it again, he was right in the referee's face helping him out. That's plenty of talking, Ricky Stewart. He's there obligingly trying to help the referee right through the day. <laughs> Callum is sick of looking at his face. He's like that little kid in the school class with his hand up all the time, isn't he? Oh, he's a pest. You'd like to have 13 like him, wouldn't you? <laughs> A truckload of behind him. A truckload. They win the scrum and Stewart uses Daly. Daly looks for the opening, finds the opening, stands, looks for support. Ricky was offering. They're 29 out from the Canberra line. Peter Sterling. Well, that's what we're going to see plenty of. Laurie Daly taking on Noel Solomon in defence. Well, how can that have been a knock forward? I don't like to come in too early, but well, Jason Croker agrees. Let's just have a look. Croker bounces back off the tackle. And it slipped straight out the back. That's a million to one a knock on. And McCallum was 10 metres away. How he decided that was a knock on is beyond me. Not only that, I wonder did he drop it cold or was it given some support? So Florimo takes advantage of it. Sears comes in. Oh, that's a great tackle. Melman Ninga. Tremendous tackle. That's an awful pass and that's a knock backwards by Fennick. I thought I might emphasise that in case he thought it was a knock-on. Soden comes to the blind side. Craig Wilson is with him, a ball player. He can unload. 15 out from the line, that's where they are. The high shot. Soden goes to the blind again and really chances a pass. David Hall, he plays the ball. Soden sweeps it away. Taylor shows it to Fennec. And then behind a decoy for Fairley. Fairley's looking for the second phase. It wasn't there. And a penalty goes to the Bears. Now, this is a tough decision. They probably have to kick the goal with 22 minutes to go because at the moment they have to score twice. But they're also on a roll. They're not far away from scoring a try here at the moment. But it is a gift two points for Jason Taylor. I think they must kick the goal still, though. With 12 men on the field, the play seems to be going from end to end. I don't think they'll have much trouble clearing their own line and kicking it back this time. Craig Wilson's an important player for North Sydney now. Spent most of his time on the interchange bench this year, but the type of player that will be suited by the wide open space is developing out there. Pongia goes on and coming off as David Wesley. Jason Taylor from right in front. And no problems. It puts them down to 14-9 now. 14-9. Canberra over North. 58 minutes gone. Back to the halfway. Rather slowly. This game has just been prized open again by North Sydney. Mal Meninga restarts.
fairly bringing it back on the first tackle and he's able to get the ball away taking it away I was about to call him Matt Sears I think it might be Matt Toshak and away from dummy half goes Soden Soden taken by Wiki right on the 30 meter line they come away now with Hearn and he's 40 out now from the line I think half uh, Jason Taylor or is it uh, David Hall David Hall comes out now a couple of meters short of the halfway mark Soden goes back looking for Taylor Taylor keeps it low torpedo punt it bounces end on end for Mullins to recapture just inside the 10 meter line and we've got involved in this game today two of the real crowd pleasers in the modern era Mullins and Sears good point raised by Peter Sterling Noel Solomon has gone on to play 5-8 for North Sydney, pushing Florimo out into the centres. But I think defensively, they would be wise to put Florimo back on Laurie Daly. We saw from that scrum win from Canberra earlier that he just walked over the top of Solomon. I'd be pushing Florimo much closer in in defence and then spelling him when they have the ball and getting a hand, uh, Solomon with his hands on the ball. Jason Croker to play the ball now. Croker tipped by a lot of people to be in that kangaroo touring party as it goes quickly through the hands and Mandruku Andruku put away about five meters on his own side of the halfway. This is the fifth tackle. Stewart decides to kick. That turns David Hall around. He's got a long run back inside the 10 meter line, almost down to his own try line. And David Hall runs into the shoulder of Jason Croker. There wasn't any sign of David Hall running around him, and now I think he wishes he did. Croker just hunched over and said, Here, run into this. And David did exactly that. Watch it. That's great defence from an ex-winger, isn't it? Well, Jason Croker started his first great career on the wing. So virtually winger on winger there, but the benefit of the strength work and playing in the forwards, Jason Croker nailed him. Tackles like that win matches. Well, what about the performance today? Old Greg McCallum, he came into the match under a, a massive amount of pressure during the week his name was mentioned in dispatches in the paper nearly every day and I don't know that he's handled that well what about you Blake? well I'll be honest with you I thought Bill Harrigan would have got this match this afternoon and I've got no reason to change my opinion of uh, who, who I thought would be the first the first uh, referee through to the grand final I thought it was going to be Bill Harrigan well what a shame this is David Hall the medicab has come out almost known straight away that he wasn't going to be able to continue some shoulder damage. Is that question too hard, Pete? One or up? Well, I think this is probably more important to the game at the moment, to be quite honest, Paul. But... Oh, jeez, can he sidestep? Can he sidestep? Yeah, you're quite right, though, about David Hall. He's, he's just a tremendous young man. He works very hard at everything he does. He's an accountant at Parramatta. He travels every day to work at Woy, uh, from Woy, Woy to Parramatta, and then he drives to training at North sometimes twice a day uh, from Parramatta and then makes the journey back to the Central Coast at night. So nobody has tried harder to make a success of rugby league than the young man who's just left the field, David Hall. The Bears then, already their injury toll not looking good. Caruana's gone for the season. David Hall, I'd say, has gone for the season. So even if they are to win this match, they're going to have to find some handy replacements very quickly. Fairly not uh, to be outdone. Having a big game today, David Fairley, as the ball is kicked by Soden, going back to shadow it with Nandruku. Nandruku comes away from the 20-metre line, but he's eventually put away by young Matt Toshak. Well, they've still only got 11 players out there in North Sydney. They still haven't replaced David Hall. That's almost suicidal in this situation. Ball back and uh, with Walters. Walters decides that now's a good time to start making some runs. And he reaches the halfway line as it comes away. Stewart switches it. And they go back where they've got the numbers out there. Of Clyde had a pass. Now it's back in the centre with Daly. They go back to where the deficiency in numbers is for North Sydney with Mullins. But that opportunity is now gone. They come away from dummy half with Clyde. And Clyde is almost to the 30 metre line. Five tackles gone. Pete, I'm just wondering if North City have got any replacements left. It's away for Stewart. Stewart on for Meninga. Meninga! I don't know whether they can stop him! Oh, don't tell me he's bombed it! It's gone back! And Nagus! Nagus puts it down! Did he get it down safely? Yes, he did! It's a try! 
Tornadis. Well, it's a freakish try. Mal Meninga ran out of support players. Sears came up with the tackle. The ball has gone back straight into the arms of his support player in Nagus. But I think I think we'll find that North Sydney, they haven't got any more replacement players. That's why there's 11 out there, and that's why we're going to see try scored out wide. Meninga confronted there by Matt Sears. The ball comes loose. No control over it whatsoever. Bounces off Sears' leg straight into the arms of Nagus, who plants the ball over the try line. Well, that is a miracle try. But you saw Meninga get on the outside of Jason Taylor there. And he's been caught out again. Jason Taylor in defence, cruising through there, Meninga. And this is just a dead-set miracle. Where's it come from? And Nagus just lobs it down. By the same token, it's not often that you see a one-in-one -one situation with Mal Meninga bearing down on someone that doesn't see the, the tackler just run over like a steamroller. Matt Sears did very, very well. Well, in the only first-grade rugby league game being played at the moment, I think a couple of our rules are really being put to the test. First of all, the send-off rule. Both those send-offs, I believe, were reportable offences without reducing the numbers on the field. And now the archaic six-replacement-only rule is being tested. If North Sydney can't get a full complement of players on the field because they're only allowed six interchanges, then the rule has to be changed. The public here are being cheated. Not quite through anything else other than a few injuries on the field have seen uh, North Sydney down to 11 men where they should have 12 and match, North, and match Canberra in that area. Meninga then attempts conversion of the try scored by Nagus. And it left the boot beautifully and hits the upright and bounces away. 18 points to nine. Canberra over North Sydney. bringing it back Canberra 18 to 9 Ruben Wickey tackled just inside the 30 meter line Canberra with the comfortable cushion there of nine points 15 minutes to go let's clarify the situation down on the sideline as a penalty goes to North North have run out of replacements blocker Yes, there's no more replacements, but the thing is, I agree with Gus Gould, they've got to change the rule. Look, they're still over there talking about it now. No one seems to really know. Eric Cox in the middle of them. There's 100 New South Wales rugby league people stand there all arguing about it. So, North Sydney, leaving the politics and the rules aside, they go about their work, and Hearn. Hearn has put down five metres out from the Canberra line. Soden, Soden, just a meter out, shrouded by Canberra players. They go to the right for Taylor. It goes on. It's with Solomon. He puts the step in on both feet, and he's tackled five meters from the line. Sears is the dummy half. Then on for Taylor. The long pass behind Hoppy. Hoppy met by the Canberra defence and a loss in ground for North Sydney. The fifth tackle back for Taylor to the air. Going through as David Fairley with Mark Soden. Now, Meninga should be penalised, really. Canberra come out of the 20-metre line for the restart, but if you watch the big, the big fellow, he simply props there and offers a shepherd. Well, he, uh, he's, he's not obliged to let them have a clear path. He's not allowed to, to do run that. Across and put yourself in oh, their path turn it and up. then prop. Of course you are. Where's the rule book, Paul? It's a problem for North Sydney here too, Ray, that... Canberra really only have to defend one side of the field. No left winger. It's not as though they're going to be pressured on their right-hand defence. And you saw them stack the left-hand side of their defence. North Sydney were covered up. And their attacking options are very limited simply because they can't replace their winger. 18-9. Canberra leading over North with 13 minutes to go. And Canberra with the penalty. Well, David Hall has come back out. Unbelievable stuff here. This 13 minutes to go. And Hall, when he left the field, he thought there's no way he would come back. But well, he's replaced himself. 
through Stewart then. It's with uh, Quentin Pongia. And Pongia wrapped up on the 30 metre line. I still think Cameron would aim most of their attack that way. Stewart shapes to turn it one way, then looks for Meninga. Meninga out of one, runs over another, bumps off. No, he doesn't. Little Matt Sears hangs on. Across now for Stewart. They're coming at Hall's wing. Inside for Mullins. Inside for Mullins, and he dives in. Well, a great pass, flick pass from Ricky Stewart. When the defences get tired, it's generally caught out on the inside men not coming across, and that's exactly what happened here. Stewart coming to the right-hand side. As we freeze it there, you can see both of these North Sydney players have got no interest in coming and covering there. As play continues, Sydney heads, and Brett Mullins, the most evasive man on the field, took full advantage, but that was just fatigue. And all of North Sydney's dreams and aspirations go up in a puff of Mullins here. Over right near the sticks. It's been a great year for North Sydney, but that does look like the end of them for 1994. And Brett Mullins' season just keeps getting better. 22 tries. I like that one. Goes up in a puff of Mullins. Mullins. Once there was Puff the Magic Dragon, now it's Puff the Magic Mullins. And I'm afraid that that's what he is. He is the modern hero of rugby league. They come along every so often before him. Well, I can remember Graham Eady when it came time for him to take the throne that was occupied by Graham Langland. He was something similar. The crowd rose every time he handled the ball, and here's Menengo again hitting the upright. He might do it three times and prove it. 22 points to nine. 69 minutes gone in the final. Restart for the Bears. And a knock-on offered by the Raiders. Well, he's offside there, so this is a penalty. Let's get the ball straight back, Norse, looking for a try. Mark Soden trying to get a quick tap on. It's gone oh. over, and a knock-on. He's had a barry. A knock-on, is it, by Craig Wilson? No, Mark, no, Mark Soden, Soden, in his haste to... Have that quick tap there. There it was, just a little one. McCallum pegged it. Well, it was tough to pick it up from that angle, but again, was it was did it, it go it forward? Up, was it knocked forward, exactly? Ah! Daly then. Putting that big fend out. This time it doesn't work for him. Brad Clyde working wider today. Well, it's been an unsatisfactory exit for North Sydney, hasn't it, when you consider that really the try that broke this game wide open for Canberra, scored by Ken Nagus, was scored when they were down to 11 players through injury. At that stage, it still could have gone either way. Canberra did look to be in the ascendancy. That try really did, for mine, put the final nail in the coffin. Some frustration now coming out. Penalty here against North Sydney. Mario Phoenix slow off the ground. But with nine minutes to go, it will be the Raiders going through to next week's season decider. And Mario Marker all over the man playing the ball. The two of the great heroes for Canberra today have been Hetherington and David Wesley. You look at them, number 42 and 43 on the back. There's 42, Hetherington taking the ball up. They both had big games. They both played well last week. And in any other team, they'd be in straight in first grade. They'd be 11 and 12. So 41 metres out from the North Sydney line. And it's with uh, Jason Croker. Think we're about four, 35 metres out from the line. I think he's had a tremendous impact on the game. Laurie Daly, obviously been playing with injury the last couple of weeks. Starting to strike some form at a hand when the game was really there. That spells danger for Canterbury. He'll be better next week. Here's Meninga now. Mullins comes around off his right hip. Then he gets away from one. Turns it inside for Clyde. Clyde looks to unload. And he's held and put away by Mario Fennec. Nine metres out. Five tackles gone. As Meninga gives it and Stewart props and then 
throws the long ball. Daly comes back, intercepted by the Bears. That'll be six more tackles. It's picked up by Stewart. Can North Sydney hold them out for another six? It's with Wiki. 22 to 9 already. And seven three-quarter minutes left to go. Walters on for Daly Meninga. Meninga dummies once. Then he picks up the runners. That is Jason Deeth, I do believe, giving it back for Mario Fennick. And so Fennick to play up 12 metres out from his own line. Soda. Taylor. They're trying to get outside the Canberra defence. The Canberra defence compressed and to get outside it is a good trick, but it slides across with you. Hey, this what is Matt Toshak. What about the pickup from Ricky Stewart on the run? Wasn't that marvellous skills? Well, I made a comment in the footy show earlier that I think he's the best in the world. I don't know whether I overstepped, did I? Well, he should be Australian halfback. I know that. Here's her now. And the ball in the hands of Craig Wilson. 31 metres out from the, uh, the North Sydney line. Played back for Soden, then for Taylor. Taylor across for Solomon. Solomon able to stand in Daly's tackle. Used Florimo, then knocked out by Mandruku. And Mandruku takes it ahead on the boot, but he'll come back for the scrum. McCallum could have let play go on there. Clyde is coming on. He could have, but he didn't see an advantage for North Sydney, given that they'd lost that much ground. And that's a good ruling. I know injury has probably dictated North Sydney's interchange, Benz, but Tim Sheens has handled his very well. Still only six minutes ago in the game, and he's got an interchange up his sleeve, giving vital players a rest and making sure he gets through to the grand final with as, uh, as little injuries as possible. Hearn standing in a tackle. The ball goes misdirected out to David Hall. I can't believe that he's back in the match, and he seems OK. He's come off on the Medicab. It seemed that he'd uh, really done a shoulder. Here they are working off his play, and it's Toshak taking it over the halfway line to be met and tackled over there by uh, Tim Magus, is it? In fact, it's Noah Nandruku. They come across for Soden. Question mark on whether that player was onside. There hadn't been a play the ball, so I guess he was. Solomon on for Hearn. Hearn puts it on the boot, rolls it in behind them. Florimo and Mullins coming quickly. Florimo. Put a hand out and Mullins was able to beat him but rounded up by David Hall. Croker using Nagus now and Nagus trying to step free of that last tackle. You would have seen him with a 70 metre run in front of him. That is David Boyle in jumper number 41. 22 to 9. Canberra. Four tries to one. Uh, here's Boyle now getting a pass away for Jason Deeth. Then for Mal Meninga. The pass goes out. Not touched, I don't think, by Nagus. And eventually he's down with the ball and it'll be play on. Walter's a dummy half, 42 metres away from the line. Stewart, a long pass out for Boyle. Boyle running up the gap. Five tackles gone now. Stewart folding around from the right to the left and finding the line. 22 metres out. Only four minutes of the match remaining. The big games are made for the big players, aren't they? And all of Canberra's big players have uh, really come good today. Stewart, Daly, Meninga in particular, Bradley Clyde's had an outstanding game as well. And that, that core of four players there, I thought, have led the way for Canberra today. They were sort of stung into it, Paul, weren't they, when they had their players sent off? And then the added incentive was Corrida when Larson left the field. They knew they were well back in the game then. And this second half, it didn't take long for Laurie Daly to stamp his class on it, come up with a long break, and then come up and set up a try. Solomon. Run around with Craig Wilson. And now they're outside them. Bar one. That was Magus making the tackle on Florimo. A quick play of the ball from Solomon over for Wilson. The ball across the back and wide for Soden. Soden out then for Toshak. Wiki, his defence uh, standing very tall today. He fairly gets away from Mandruku the first time, but not the second. They miss a lot of tackles, these two wingers, but they've got the luxury of speed. Even if they half miss a man, they've got the speed to turn around and gather them in. They're hard attack material, but by geez, you'd like them on the end of your back line. Five tackles gone then as North Sydney probe for a try that will make no difference at all to the result. 
and they lose it in trying to do so as Croker is tackled by I'm sure a wounded Greg Florimo it has been for the major part of the game gallant performance by Greg Meninga comes away from dummy half and gives it to Nagus 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 still going looking for somebody to come alongside him tackled 40 meters out from the Bears line Stewart now Daly Daly kicks it came off the head of Mark Soden Mullins comes up with the ball gets rid of Soden runs around another comes inside another and is put down eventually over there by um, by Sean Hoppy the referees ruled six again too so there's still five up their sleeve here wouldn't believe that Norse could hang on as Croker finds Nagus one on one this will be a try Quentin Pongi oh, has passed no. to Walters. Oh. I've been sitting Not next done. to you too long, Rabs. You've done a rep still. Oh, no. You're kidding. Oh. <laughs> Pardon me for laughing, but I can assure you that they've had plenty to laugh about through the year as young Jason Taylor makes the break and then Sean Hoppy goes up a gear. No but not fast enough to get away from Ruben Wicke. North's a fan right across the ground. Taylor's pass, all of 25 metres on the bounce taken by Fennick. He goes back. Soden was with it. Soden will look for Taylor, but he's taken and put to ground. A minute and 20 seconds left in the game. As Fairley puts his big hand out and gets rid of one would-be tackle. Taylor scoops the ball up. He's going to try right down to the full-time siren. Soden and Toshak combine. He puts a little kick in. It goes over the sideline. About 10 metres away from the Canberra line. So Norse Bear out today. It's been a great season for them. Had a chance to make their first grand final for 50-odd years, but uh, just not good enough on the day. But let's not forget some of the great players have had this season. Matt Sears has come of age. Jason Taylor was outstanding. And, of course, Mario Fennick, who leaves the club in about 45 seconds to head next year to the South Queensland Crushers. 41,941 today. 41,941. This semi-final series, I must say, the highest compliment I can pay it, normally we watch one grand final a year, but this year I feel like I've broadcast four grand finals already. 15 seconds to go. The Bears making their exit, but making it in typical fashion. Trying right down to the wire. And they score a try on full time. And who do you think scores it? The injured David Hall. A stamp of his character and a perfect example of what rugby league players are made of. 22 points to 13. And that's a fact. Has he scored the try? Has he deemed it a try? Oh, you don't tell me he's recalled it. Well, I'm not sure. I think he has. Forward pass, so no try. So no try. Well, here we were just, I suppose, rejoicing in something beautiful in the game. David Hall, that would have been absolute icing on the cake for a miserable ending. There didn't seem to be any urgency on the rugby league field from the officialdom. And suddenly somebody said forward pass. And there's Mario. He's a legend, Mario Fennick. Been a great player for both Souths and Norse, now heading to a new career with the South Queensland side. Very disappointed today. He saw the chance of a, a grand final disappear. So the final score, 22 points to nine.